Hello and greetings everybody. In my last talk, I spoke about the survival value of melanin to Homo sapiens while you were still in the depths of the African forest. When and why and where did Homo sapiens start losing these extra grains of melanin during evolution in some parts of the world? That's what we are going to consider today. From the open savannas of equatorial Africa, Homo sapiens started their migration for better pastures. This began around 70,000 years ago. As they migrated further and further into the northern latitudes, it started getting colder and the intensity of the sun became considerably less. At this point, the heavy pigment of tropical man became a burden and not a benediction. Vitamin D is crucial for skeletal growth and development and also for maintaining normal immunity and hence critical for the survival of our species. About 90% of vitamin D is synthesized in the skin by the ultraviolet, short ultraviolet light, which we call UVB. People of dark skin of Fitzpatrick five and six types require at least 10 times more sun exposure than those of types two and three to produce the same amount of vitamin D in the skin. Because in heavily pigmented skin, the melanin absorbs or scatters most of the UV, UV, UV rays. The evolutionary counter to this problem was that migrants to cooler climes started to lose their extra grains of melanin and so became fairer and fairer, allowing the UVB to penetrate deeper and start the process of vitamin D synthesis bringing into play once again Darwin's adaptation and survival. The environment in which we exist is divisible into external and internal. So far we have considered the role of the extra grains of melanin in surviving the rigors of the external environment or the milieu exterior as it is known. The milieu interior was proposed by the famous French physiologist Claude Bernard. It was very popular in his country and it is said that when he died, the whole of Paris wept. This milieu interior is kept constant by many physiological mechanisms despite the external environment tending to disrupt this homeostasis. To a small extent, melanin could play a role in maintaining the constancy of the milieu interior as postulated by Masson in 1916. Being a biological electron exchange polymer, by means of its capacity for oxidation and reduction, it can protect melanin containing tissues which may otherwise be disrupted by free radicals produced during metabolism. So, during evolution, cutaneous melanin played an important role in adaptation and survival of our species. Whereas the biochemistry and functions of cutaneous melanin have been well researched and understood, there is yet another melanin in Homo sapiens that is poorly delineated and that is neuromelanin. It is an insoluble brown-black pigment classified as true melanin with chemical properties similar to both eumelanin and pheomelanin in the skin. Its true function in the brain is not clearly understood. Obviously, it cannot be for photoprotection. 
though not present at birth, it appears by about 18 months as visible pigment granules. This goes on increasing until adolescence and then gradually declines in old age. It is found in proportionately large amounts in the substantia nigra and midbrain and in the locus ceruleus in the pons. It is found within the neurons and not melanocytes. There is no tyrosinase in the brain cells, but tyrosinase hydroxylase is prevalent in brain tissue because the conversion of tyrosine to dopa is an essential step in the formation of catecholamines, dopamine and noradrenaline, which are vital neurotransmitters. So Marston's theory that neuromelanin is just neuronal garbage is unacceptable. Neuromelanin avidly binds to heavy metals, both physiologically present and exogenously administered. It not only scavenges iron, it can bind zinc, copper, and manganese, and toxic environmental metals like selenium and mercury. Such a high capacity trapping defense system is aptly compared to a black hole working beneficially against oxidative stress within the substantia nigra. Let's look at certain clinical scenarios which could give clues to the role of neuromelanin in the CNS. There is no correlation between intensity of cutaneous melanin and neuromelanin. For instance, albinos with hardly any cutaneous pigment have the normal complement of neuromelanin in the brain. Hornikiewicz et al elegantly demonstrated that loss of dopamine in the brain is the biochemical hallmark of Parkinson's disease and that exogenous supply of dopamine precursors could reverse the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. This is the rationale of giving levodopa in PD which is converted to dopamine and then to noradrenaline whereas in the skin, dopa is converted to melanin. In Parkinson's, an increase of total content of iron in the substantia nigra is found. There is a close similarity between Parkinson's and manganese poisoning. Manganese has a great affinity for melanin-containing tissue. In the hat-making industry in Britain, Many employees developed involuntary movements similar to Parkinson's. It was known locally as hatter's shakes. The inner lining of these hats that they were manufacturing contained manganese and it was proposed that the manganese absorbed into the bloodstream was deposited in the extrapyramidal nuclei and the neuromelanin present was not able to handle the high levels of manganese. In phenylketonuria, there is depigmentation of substantia nigra along with pigment dilution of the skin and there is mental retardation. Whereas in albinism, where neuromelanin is normal, there is no mental change. In 1977, a 25-year-old science student a drug addict to boot, he set up a home lab for illicit drug synthesis. During the process, he inadvertently produced an analog of pethidine, MPTP, methylphenyl tetrapyropyridine, which he self-injected intravenously and within a few hours, he developed acute Parkinson's disease. MPTP is a neurotoxin which selectively destroys the pigment cells of substantia nigra because of its affinity for neuromelanin. Many environmental toxins like herbicides, 
pesticides like parake, which resemble MPTP, can cause Parkinson's disease. So also some drugs like chlorpromazine and haloperidol, they also have affinity for neuromelanin and are known to cause extra pyramidal symptoms. All the above scenarios with extra pyramidal symptoms could be due to either lack of neuromelanin or because the neuromelanin is neutralized or overwhelmed by metals, chemicals or drugs. This would suggest an important role for neuromelanin in human health and disease. So, melanin has helped the human race to survive through the millennia and through many vicissitudes and challenges. Let's not despise those extra grains of melanin which some people possess. Thank you.